I first want to start by thanking Jenny Kwan for inviting me here and for Thekla of Alpha, who it's been my great pleasure to get to know over this past year in conjunction with my, uh, my new documentary film, 731. So thank you. And thanks for those who organized this today. So I wanted to tell you personally why I've come to be passionate about this issue and why I support what Jenny Kwan is doing. And I hope Canada can, can recognize this. Just within the past couple of years, I actually traveled to Nanjing and spent some time in that city and spent an entire day at the magnificent and haunting memorial that they have there. I was in that part of China because I was producing this film, 731, which is about similar war crimes that took place in China against innocent Chinese civilians and for which there has not been adequate recognition or reconciliation. So I spent some time in Nanjing and in central China and I met and interviewed many still living victims of Japanese aggression and war crimes and many of their descendants. And those stories live in you and, and they don't leave you. A couple of months later in production of this film, we then went to Tokyo and we were traveling around Japan and interviewing people who were connected with this issue there. And one of the people who I met and interviewed in Tokyo was a man called Mr. Motegi. And he was the leader of a group, I think I've got this right, they called themselves the Society for the Dissemination of Historical Fact. And he came down and met me at the National Press Club in Tokyo and we spent some time and I, I wanted to hear what this man thought about things. And he had a lot of grievances about a lot of the different ways that people, history remembers what happened in World War II in the Pacific. But he was particularly upset about the Nanjing Massacre. This bothered him on a lot of levels and one of the reasons he wanted to meet with me was to argue with me about it. And You know, he wanted to argue about the official uh, story of the events leading up to the Nanjing Massacre. He had his own very different version of this. Um, he wanted to argue about the numbers of, of people who were raped and killed there. He obviously had a much lower number that he thought we ought to be talking about. And in general, he just felt that it was very unfair, as he put it, for people to continue to draw attention to this issue. Because in his words, what this did was it hurt the feelings of patriotic Japanese people. Don't think about that, hurt the feelings of, of people. So I was quite haunted by my encounter with Mr. Motegi and, and what this meant. You know, there were a lot of nutters and freaks who you can encounter anywhere around the world and you know, you could meet them in downtown Tokyo outside of the Yasukuni Shrine where a lot of right-wingers still gather, mostly older guys, um, driving trucks that have big rising sun imperial Japanese flags and with, you know, speakers and microphones and, and shouting stuff like what Mr. Motegi was saying. But, you know, you kind of get the sense that these are French people. But Mr. Motegi was a driven, organized, very intelligent man. And this was bothersome to me. It took me a couple of days to get over this. And, you know, eventually I kind of saw the bigger picture that you know, also, what else did I find in, in Tokyo on that trip? I, I went to a big demonstration that took place outside of the Diet, where tens of thousands of peace-loving Japanese people came out to demonstrate against proposed changes to the Japanese Constitution that would allow a return to militarism. Um, I met a Japanese lawyer who was very upset about the continued linkages between Japan's government and the Yasukuni Shrine. And I even interviewed a former prime minister of Japan, Yukio Hatoyama, who said that, in his view, Japan should keep apologizing for these crimes until no one is asking for apologies anymore. And I thought that was a really profound statement. So it reminded me, hey, you know, while there are these bad things happening, you know, like President Barack Obama said, the the moral arc of history bends towards justice. And you could see that going on even among a lot of Japanese people there. 
But then you have to remember, if the moral arc of history is bending towards justice, it's bending because there are people who are bending it. People like you, Jenny Kwan, Tech Lit and everybody here who are trying to keep these issues alive, trying to make sure they're not forgotten. Because if the 20th century has taught us anything, it's taught us that a, all it takes is a small group of very driven ideologues who stew their minds in the acid of ethnic nationalism for terrible things to happen. And we can't let that happen. You know, there have been many times after my encounter with Mr. Motegi that I tried to sort of respond as if we were having the conversation again. And he kept saying, you know, why do you people always seek to bring this up again? And, you know, when is this going to end? There has to be an end to it. So here would be my answer to that. The time at which to stop saying we must remember or we must get a recognition or an apology or a repudiation will come when we no longer have people like Mr. Motegi and his allies who are seeking to diminish, confuse, and deny the history. We're still not there yet. But I think that's one of the answers for that. Thank you very much, and please support Jenny Kwan's initiative.